Am I the asshole for considering divorcing my husband even though my family is advising against it? I'm a 34F, and for the last 10 years, I've been married to a man who will just call him. Our life together has been filled with ups and downs, like any marriage, I guess. But lately, I've started to wonder if I made the wrong choice. Maybe it's time for me to leave him, and now everyone in my family is telling me not to. Let me start from the beginning. When we first got married, life felt good. He had this charm about him, a kind of energy that would light up every room. But over the years, that spark faded. He became distant, mostly sunk into his world of work or TV. He'd come home, plop himself on the couch, and scroll on his phone for hours. It was as if I was living with a ghost. At first, I thought it was just a phase. But this phase went on for years. Conversations grew smaller and smaller. I would try to pull him into talks about our day, our plans, or anything that mattered to me, but I often got minimal responses. Sometimes, there was complete silence. I've laid awake at night, staring at the ceiling, wondering if I was the issue. Maybe I wasn't interesting enough or pretty enough anymore. Last summer, I took a leap and joined a book club. Something inside me craved connection. I wanted to be happy, to laugh, to share ideas with other adults. At the club, I met Sarah, an amazing woman who had everything I once wanted. She was vibrant, full of life. We became friends, and I began to feel seen again. Things changed a bit at home when I started sharing more about my life with Sarah. Instead of bustling through the evening with my husband, I'd often come home recharged from my book club. One night, I excitedly told him about a new book we discussed, but he barely looked up from his phone. That's nice, he muttered. I felt the old hurt return, that familiar feeling of isolation. I tossed around the idea of divorce for the first time that night. As the months rolled on, I found myself growing distant from him. The more time I spent with Sarah and the other members of the book club, the more miserable I became at home. They shared their dreams, hopes, and fears, something I didn't realize I had been longing for. I started to think, what if I could be happy again? What if I didn't have to feel neglected and alone? When I finally voiced the idea of divorce, I expected some understanding. Instead, he lashed out angrily. It's just a phase you're going through, he said. You can't be serious. I felt crushed. I had never intended to hurt him. All I wanted was to feel seen. I reached out to my family, thinking they would offer comfort and understanding. To my shock, they lined up on his side. My mother told me I was overreacting, that every marriage has its problems. My sister echoed her, saying, just professional help will fix it. You can't throw it all away without trying. It felt like a wave of voices pulling me back into my life with him, imprisoning me in a role I no longer wanted to play. But their support felt more like shackles than guidance. I started doubting myself. Was I the one being unreasonable? Was divorce too extreme of a measure? I found myself torn. On one hand, I longed for freedom, for a connection that didn't leave me feeling empty. On the other, I was scared of being alone, scared of what everybody would say, or how I would cope. There were days when I would sit at the kitchen table with my mind racing, contemplating my choice. I watched him shuffle around the house, completely oblivious to the storm brewing inside me. I began to feel guilt. Was it fair to him that I wanted to break apart a life he seemed comfortable with? He never struck me as abusive or cruel, just lost in his own world. Would I be hurting him too much by leaving? One night, while I was sipping tea and staring out the window at the stars, I had a realization. The stars shone bright even when they felt far away, and maybe I could shine too, no matter how distant that light seemed from my life. I remembered my laughter with Sarah, the ideas we shared, the excitement of learning new things without restraint. I made a list of things I wanted in life. I wanted laughter again, support, care, and someone who would ask me about my day without being prompted. My husband was not going to change. He was like a book I had already read, the pages turned, but the plot never evolved. So, I decided to approach him one last time. This time, I was firm yet calm. I explained how I felt neglected, how deep my loneliness ran, and how I couldn't see a future where both of us could be happy. We talked for hours. His anger simmered down to frustration and finally to sadness. But the tears, while painful to see, felt like they were cleansing something. My heart might have been breaking for him, but I had to take care of myself too. I still think about my family and their words. They still might be mad at me, but I can't let that chain me. This journey isn't easy, and it feels like I'm walking the road alone for now, but I'm learning to take comfort in my own company again. I've realized that sometimes, you don't need to ask if you're the asshole for wanting happiness. Sometimes, being kind to yourself means walking away from what doesn't serve you anymore. I may lose people along the way, 
but maybe I will find myself in the process. That thought alone is worth the risk.